Haha. Hopefully my screen changed effectively. Uh, so um, for this demo portion, what I'm going to do is I'm going to really focus on walking you through how you can go from um, sort of your global integration queue all the way through to automating down to your developer team. Uh, and so to do that, I'm going to start with this team here. Uh, actually, I'll go back a page. Um, first thing you'll notice for anyone who's been using event orchestration for the last little while, uh, this is our new UI. Uh, we got a lot of feedback in the past saying folks wanted a more structured UI to understand where things were on the screen. Uh, we listened to that feedback, and this is what things look like now, where each individual part of event orchestration has its own section on the page. So we have integrations, source integration keys, Global orchestration, it starts with global orchestration, service routes, start your service routes, and then service orchestrations helps you navigate to the orchestration part of whatever service you want to work with. So it's all very structured now. Um, we've also improved a lot of stuff. So um, for folks who are used to global integration keys, they're right here um, in your global integration key page. And then additionally, you can add multiple new integration keys. So you can have up to 10. Um, integration keys with any event orchestration. And each of these integration keys comes with their own event ingestion limit. So up to 10 keys, each of their own event limit allows you to drive more traffic into a single rule set. And again, helps uh, folks get things set up really easily and really quickly. You can also rename these and delete them now. So if you have to cycle your keys, you can really easily cycle them. It makes it a lot easier to manage things, especially in a, a controlled environment. Um, but for this demo, we want to keep our current integration keys. We're happy with those. What we want to do is we want to create a new global orchestration. And specifically, I want to help a team manage a new product release. So we know that um, this is our, our checkout engineering team, so it makes their checkout process. Um, they're expecting a new product release to come out in the next week, and they want to make sure that they don't get bombarded with um, irrelevant notifications associated with that new product launch. So the first thing they want to do is say, a new rule that applies across all of their services that says, uh, you know, these critical errors, um, they want to tag any of them. So they want to say, click on this, get that tag. Uh, and they actually want to just uh, continue having these BSP2, have warning severity, or let's make it for severity, and save that. And so what this is going to do is this is going to mean any event that matches these criteria are going to continue being monitored and tracked in the exact same way they always have been. What they want to do next is create a new rule uh, that says for a scheduled date range, uh, let's say next week. They want to save that. And then additionally, they want to say um, anything that has uh, an elevated response time for that week. So we're going to say this. Uh, they actually want to start suppressing things. So they're actually expecting elevated response time. They have a bunch of new customers coming in. Those customers um, are going to be obviously putting pressure on the system. They don't want to get distracted with these. Um, and actually, they want to start pausing them. So for five minutes, pause all these and leave a note saying, pausing these notifications things should heal. And so with these three rules, what a central team has now done is made sure that typical events, normal events are treated the same regardless of what's happening. But during this special launch window, and I'll even name this so folks understand, big launch week, save that. Now everyone knows this is your, your list of rules for launch week. What we're able to do is customize exactly what happens to those events across everyone in the organization. And we can see here as well that we're, we're routing the different teams in particular. Um, and what the checkout team wants to make sure is that they do have their own processes as well. It's great that the, the central team is suppressing or pausing notifications for them. However, you know, they still want to do their own stuff afterwards. And specifically um, for any issue that comes in that has this API health check, they actually don't want that to pause. Um, they want to fully suppress that. So they know that this is very distracting for teams. They want to suppress that. They can hit save. And then additionally, for critical errors, let's say metric alert monitoring errors, 
they want to go ahead and set those to P1. They want they want to set this to critical, um, and then they also want to trigger a webhook. So let's say, you know, they want to trigger their application monitor webhook. Hit save. Oh, that's an endpoint. That's fair. Hit save. And they're good to go. And so in this case, what they've done is that central team is still managing what's happening during launch day, but this decentralized team, this DevOps team, is still able to configure what happens at the team level as well and overwrite things where it's important for them. Uh, so with that, in just a couple of clicks, um, this organization has set up end-to-end -end event driven automation for a major product release that's coming up in the next couple of days. And, and as folks saw, this is all live. None of that was, was pre-configured and it, it did take just a couple of minutes to get going with it. So it really is designed to be usable as, as quickly as possible.